Welcome back to another episode. Today, we have a very special guest, Mike Gatsby, co-founder of O3 World. So, Mike, could you tell us a bit about yourself? Yeah, hey, thanks for having me. Um, so, I am uh, co-founder, uh, chief innovation officer at O3. O3 is a uh, customer experience consultancy, so we... Um, we really focus on understanding gaps and opportunities within customer journeys and, and use some form of strategy design and, and development to create solutions uh, to, to either address those gaps or take advantage of opportunities. Um, practically speaking, that turns into a lot of um, website um, and digital product development. Um, but it's really the strategy work uh, that really you know sets the uh, foundation for uh, all of that work. Um, my role there is really around new products and services, um, uh, and and I run sort of our innovation group as well. Uh, these days, that that has a lot to do with uh, AI and and uh, sort of what's been happening uh, more specifically around generative AI and ChatGPT. Um, but you know that's trying to figure out how to how to make that work for our various clients and in, in, in their various industries. Yeah, all right. Well, I'm actually really excited to dive right into AI, which is going to be today's topic. So what is your experience with AI at O3, Mike? So we're, as I mentioned, we're customer experience consultants. So everything we look at uh, with the solutions we create is about making experiences better. Um, from our perspective, you know, AI is like, you know, any other technology <laughs> that has come before it in that it is, it's, it's, best used with a use case and uh, a business objective in mind. Um, organizational objective uh, if it doesn't happen to be a business. Um, so from our perspective, we look at, you know, the same thing I was just discussing around understanding journeys, uh, understanding whether it's a customer journey, a patient journey, an employee, uh, you know, experience, really understanding where those where the gaps and opportunities are. And then we're looking at AI in various ways to uh, solve those problems. Um, Fundamentally, there are probably four um, specific use cases we're looking at. Uh, the first is in personalization. Personalization. Yeah. So personalization is really the, um, and, and actually these days it's hyper-personalization uh, when we look at some of these AI solutions, but the idea of having an experience that um, is built around uh, segments, um, groups of individuals, or uh, the individual itself, which is a term we use, hyper-personalization. Um, the idea there is we're leveraging uh, data uh, within a digital experience to help sort of provide uh, some sort of mode of experience uh, for the individual, and then with goals in mind, right? If it's an app, it's retention and in, in, in daily okay. use. If it's a website, it's you know, how do we you know turn prospects into customers, um, and and various sort of gaps between those uh, uh, various digital experiences. Um, we look at conversation. I think conversation is going to be a big topic, and, and I'm sure we'll dive into this further. But you know how we engage with the internet and our digital world right now, it, I think is fundamentally going to change. Um, I think conversational um, interfaces, uh, it, whether they're voice or chat or what have you, have been fairly limited over the years. Um, they've been sort of interesting to a point. You know, we all yell at Alexa to turn the music up or turn the music down or do various other things. Maybe you order products, although I find that kind of weird through an Alexa interface personally. Right. Um, but now with the level of um, sophistication that something like a ChatGPT or, or some of these other large language models um, provide, it, you know, how we engage there is going to be really interesting. And then the last two are really in predictive experiences. So mm -hmm. if you think about um, – a proactive experience. Uh, uh, the, the one I use all the time is like if you have a problem in a retail experience, the idea that an organization or say a, a retailer would check in with you about how your product experience is once you were delivered something so that if there was a problem, they could identify what that problem was before you even had to tell them that. Hmm. Wow. I mean, you're, you're all of a sudden you're turning problems into opportunities. I all of a sudden had a better brand experience because um, <clears throat> the retailer was in front of that. But they can only do that through data and, and, and connected journeys. Uh, and the last, as I mentioned, or was saying is is really around automation. 
Um, workflow improvements are a big deal. We're talking right. about how AI is is going to um, supercharge jobs or, or maybe even replace them. Um, a big reason for that is the ability to um, really um, take away the tedious work, you right. know, and, and, and make people's uh, lives more streamlined. Yeah. I feel like uh, customer experience-wise, chatbots – Powered by AI, they've, they've been around for I don't know how long. I feel like they've been around for over a decade mm. now. Uh, but what you said that I find really interesting is the predictive aspect of it, which creates more opportunities for the business. Like, do you feel like AI is really making strong headway in that? Uh, for sure. Um, if you sort of look at the, um, we'll say the evolution of AI yeah. moving from um, early on, you had what were considered like rules-based systems, right? The idea that you know I'm gonna I'm gonna create a chain of um, uh, uh, decisions that somebody can make in order to get to an outcome, versus um, you know the sort of next stage when we got into more machine learning type solutions where. Um, you know, we, we need heart or huge swaths of data, um, to basically decide between a, a B and a C scenario, right. right. To what we have now with large language models, um, it, it, you can now move from linear experiences. The idea that I'm going to do, you know, as everybody's ever gone through a checkout or a sign up process, I'm going to go through from step one to step X. Mm-hmm. Well, that's fine if it's a relatively simple experience. And, and as, as somebody who's built, you know, user experience, you know, policies, procedures, practices over the years, you know, there's a lot of best practices that get baked into that. But the reality is, if you think about your human experience, you go talk to somebody at a store, right? You want to have a human experience. I want to maybe not all of those experiences are the same. It might not be a linear experience. I might be more concerned about one thing as opposed to another. So we might talk a little bit in circles to get to answers, and that's okay. Mm -hmm. Um, But the end of the day, I think what AI is going to do for experience overall is really make that a reality in a digital space. Wow. Yeah, to make that, rather than having that linear experience, but Mm -hmm. to give them, like, I suppose something that more mimics the human experience. For sure, for sure. So I think that brings us to the next topic, which is, is there a balance between using AI and having that human touch? Mm. Or do you think AI is just going to take over and we don't need humans anymore uh, in terms of customer service human, experience? The, the term we use is human in the loop, right? Um, hum, so I'm sorry, what's that again? Human, human in the loop. Human um, in the loop. So so first of all, I I, I think let's, let's just sort of touch on the idea of is AI going to replace people, right? Um, no. <laughs> I just sort of say the short answer there. And, and the reason I say this is because if, if we look at any um, serious improvement in technology over the years, what it does is make humans more efficient and more effective. Um, what AI will do is is fundamentally make those who understand how to use it more valuable to the people that they're trying to engage with, but it isn't going to replace people um, Mm -hmm. from that perspective, Um, at least not in my opinion. I think the people that figure out how to use it are the ones that are going to be most successful. Um, But from, from my perspective, like that's sort of like the first thing to deal with in that question is like, okay, are we, are we really going to replace people? and, And what does that look like? Then as you look at what it's going to do to sort of impact Um, the human experience, I think about scenarios like we do a lot of work in financial services and in financial services, you think about someone like an advisor. Well, an advisor plays a valuable role in helping you manage your money, right? Ultimately manage your investments, set you up for retirement, all of that. Um, It's a complicated job, right? Like at the end of the day, there's a whole lot to know about markets, about diversifying investments, all of that. For AI to help that advisor to do just the valuable, creative, and um, relationship development type work with an end customer and not have to worry about the 30 hours, you know, a, a, a month that they have to put together reports, I mean, to me, that just makes them, that makes the time they're spending going to be more valuable because at the end of the day, there are certain jobs where humans probably don't want to interact with other humans. But there are plenty of jobs 
like that where like I want to sit down and talk to another person for mm-hmm. sure. Yeah. No, that's definitely very interesting. So when it comes to AI, there seems to be this perception of whether or not it's good or evil. Half mm. of the world is uh, terrified that it's going to replace our jobs. And uh, who knows? It might be. I mean, we've all seen the term. We've all seen the movie The Terminator, right? So there's that side of AI. And then there's the other side where AI is here to say this. So, Mike, from your perspective, do you consider AI as a superhero who is here to save the day or the villain from The Terminator that we all got to watch out for? <laughs> So I, it, it was, we were prepping for this, and I was thinking a lot about this one. Um, some of this will unfortunately be a bit of a self-fulfilling prophecy. So I believe that you know, where we land with all this is, is ultimately what people decide it to be. Right. Um, my, I'm a very optimistic person. So my hope is uh, that it's, it's more the, the, the superhero side of things than the villain side of things. But I was thinking about this if I was thinking about a specific superhero. Right. right? Um, the, the character uh, Rogue in, um, in X-Men. X-Men, yeah. 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 Um, her power is that she can take other people's power. I almost think about AI in the opposite way, right? Mm. If you could take power and then give it to other people and make them superheroes for a day, Mm, that's how I sort of look at AI overall. Um, It really does come with its concerns and comes with caution for sure. I I, I don't think anyone's, you know, I don't think anyone's so naive as to think that, that anything with this much power doesn't have that much, you know, capability of creating bigger problems. But at the end of the day, you know what it can do uh, in a positive way is remarkable. I mean, we're not we're not just talking about workflow improvements. We're talking about a cure for cancer, right? Like that's a big deal. Um, we're talking about you know, quite frankly, look at uh, COVID. Look at the the the. Um, uh, vaccines that came out and how quickly they came out. A lot of that had to do with AI. Really? A lot of that had to do with their ability to work through huge numbers of re- of, of research data in a much quicker way. And, and our, our ability to expedite that is, um, is remarkable. So to me, it's the positive side of things versus the negative side of things that people really need to focus on um, in order to get the most out of this while also being cautious about uh, where it's going. And then truthfully, and I'm sure we'll get to this, you know, there does need to be a larger body, if I'm being honest, very similar to – the the Cold War and 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 nuclear power mm, in the yeah. say 50s, 60s, 70s, and 80s, we needed worldwide, you know, consensus on how to manage it. Well, I I, I believe that's the same thing with AI. Uh, yeah, our subscription starts at 499 a month, and you get everything from project manager, illustrator, designers, UX, UI. Um, it's it's been a game changer for a lot of agencies. So, give us a try. Sounds good. Thank you, and we'll see you in the next one.